never knew where I'd be I wouldn't look too far ahead And the past was history No place, no friend so We're uh, Patty Mitchell and Robert Lockheed and we're talking about the process of art residencies and how we um, approach working with organizations to help design new programming uh, advance existing programming through the arts. And um, I've been doing this for about 20 years and have really been thinking about approaches and materials and uh, how to work with folks with uh, living with developmental disabilities and work through talents and interests. And I have been doing it um, with other artists in studios but really designing programming by myself um, when I do consulting work, traveling around. And I did that for a while and then met Robert and we started doing projects together and it took a turn. Because in the past I would come go into a site, work with the staff, the individuals, talk about concepts, approaches, materials, do some artwork and show examples of what was possible. But that was a lot to undertake in a week. And now working with Robert who has um, incredible building skills, mechanical understanding, uh, I can talk to the staff and to the administration while Robert's building and then he can do the same while I'm making. And so this partnership has made it so that when we leave a site, the artwork that we leave behind is, I would, it's quadrupled in its presence um, from just me going in. It's really helped also is because there could be more one-on-one -on -one, uh, interaction with the artists and also uh, helping the staff to better understand the process because in a week's time um, it's a lot. It's a lot to be able to be available for questions from both uh, artists and staff and being able to lay out the process where having my background, my background is in plumbing and heating, construction, I have a mechanical engineering degree it's, I'm just very versed in uh, being able to work with different materials and structures uh, for hanging artwork. And Patty can be focusing on um, making stuff and getting the artwork. Now I'm, I'm pretty, I'm into a big part of that too because I go from the logistical piece to the making of art but also being able to support her you know, having canvases covered and blueboard and different materials readily available so that process can keep going on and then uh, staff, artists, and Patty can be more in responding to the materials instead of the setup and maintaining that. And that can be, um, that can be daunting. Mm -hmm. And being safe. So when we did our town studio and you <clears throat> built the set for the curtain, that thing was built in. It was not going to fall. Oh, it's not yeah. going to go anywhere. It's in there, nice and tight and strong, and uh, and I didn't have to worry about it. I knew you were going to do it, and then I just sewed. Right, safety. Uh, I was a consulting engineer for about five and a half years, working on Major League Baseball parks. So safety is like a big issue when you know people with uh, developmental disabilities, do they have access and will the piece of art be safe and uh, structurally sound where people aren't going to pull it down or cause some injuries and things like that. So that uh, experience has been invaluable just in the safety aspect of it. And we've had a lot of fun. Ooh, yes, lots of fun. Yeah. yeah and we continue to have fun. The first one that comes to mind is the dinosaur project. Mm -hmm. Did you say you built the structure, the skeleton? Right. That was a collaborative art project with the uh, University of Ohio. And we did a project where we designed and built uh, two dinosaurs. And it was made with uh, scrap uh, PVC pipe. Yeah, that was a, that was a huge project. Um, probably the one, the, the other one that was earlier in uh, last year was uh, our time in Anchorage where we were taking art and uh, transposing it onto plywood mm, and cool. um, building different, uh, taking illustrations and making uh, different animals and flowers and uh, the we did the uh, 
room, room divider, divider yeah. which was it was a it was another project that uh, I had have never um, explored or even thought about doing anything like that. So creating some really beautiful, uh, you know, beautiful pieces of art that are uh, the base illustrations or designs of uh, the artists. Ooh, the driftwood. The driftwood, yes, yeah. That was our second trip to um, to Alaska, and we went to three different sites, and we uh, collected driftwood, um, some from the ocean, and some from uh, freshwater sources like lakes. And we had the artist paint and do different design work on the driftwood. And then I built them into sculptures. And also uh, in Kodiak, we uh, actually built a bench, a bench that was functional. You can sit in and uh, was uh, kind of like a Dr. Zeus type of bench. It was beautiful, very art, very colorful. With the summit. In Akron, uh, we did a, a project with uh, Dream Out Loud Studio, and it was a quilt and some plywood that was cut out and decorated and installed in the, an entranceway in their building. And could I have done that by myself? There's, I, it could, I could have broken it down, I think, to build a lot of that, but not to necessarily install it, and it would have taken a lot of negotiation to get find someone to do that and to find the materials and the components and the permission and the, you know, so, having the knowledge of like what these walls are made of and what kind of mollies you need, and ha you know, I I didn't even have to think about it. I was all I had to do was say, let's do you know, what about this? And then next thing I know, it's being built, which is a dream, an absolute dream. Speaking of that, uh, the Summit County project that was, uh, we had done like uh, wood wood hangings and wall hangings made out of wood and different things like that but this time we took uh, we took the material and the wood and we combined it into a quilt so the the actual uh, dragonflies became part of the quilt it was yeah I, it was very exciting I liked it the balloons that is a medium that I picked up about a year and a half ago um, I I love balloons and I've learned so much from them because it's it's very much about keeping everything in tension so there's a structural aspect of it that you have to keep in mind all the time and uh, so the practicing it's very very good uh, you know the the mind-body integration and twisting balloons and putting things together so not only has it helped me in learning more about structural uh, structures and how to put things together but it's very uh, aesthetically pleasing um, to the eye, and we have we're pretty much incorporated balloons in everything we do. I mean, we don't leave we don't leave the house without balloons. It's just a, a, a it's a huge part of it. My sense is that pe for people that don't have a lot of artistic skills or skills of putting things together, it's a really comfortable medium for them to explore and to uh, be very successful at it. And uh, have lots of fun. Right, so we use it with staff development and introduction and getting to know people, um, changing a space and just introducing this idea that we're going to come in and we're going to be working with color and experimenting, exploring materials and it's a really safe first step into um, an art process. But uh, yeah, it's wearable art, we make installations, it's, um, it's, a, it's a really fun medium. So we can do a pretty profound workshop in one day um, and leave behind evidence of crazy, wacky art, take photographs with everybody with it, and then kind of just leave on our, in our magic little pixie car and off we go. <laughs> thank you, Patty, and thank you, Robert. first met I never knew where I'd be I wouldn't look too far ahead and the past was history No place, no friend, no lover took my mind from the road No one could distract me from where I had to go
Stayed up all night trying to figure it out Why is it easy to accept your love and without any doubt I unpack my suitcase, put my road maps away 